and more effective ways um, and devices to implement that are less costly as well. Like, you know, you have the little puffer machines that we have them in Phoenix as well, where you just go in and it, it, you, the, it uh, puffs little um, air. And that's much more effective at detecting bomb particles than, say, this body scanner, and it's much less intrusive. And so I think in, in this area, privacy is a very, very difficult area to litigate because technology has far outpaced our privacy law. So we have not updated our privacy laws since the mid-80s. And um, yet technology since the mid-80s, I mean, that's when we were, you know, we weren't even using emails the way we were, there was no Facebook, there was no tweeting. And so technology has far outpaced privacy laws, which is why it has been so difficult to litigate and try to mobilize the public. So, yes? Yeah, is there a, a petition of sorts to get rid of our peril, or how do we get rid of this stuff? Oh, yeah. We, the ACLU is, an, a, we do not take positions. If it's it an elected official, we, for example, we do not, we're prohibited by policy from, say, supporting a recall of our PIO, um, which is why we're not taking a position on the recall of Russell Pierce. There is um, a group in Mesa that is collecting signatures to recall Senator Pierce. Um, and I think with our Pio, I think ultimately um, he has been, he's facing some serious um, accusations, not just of civil rights violations, but of malfeasance, of misusing public monies. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, ultimately that is going yeah. to be his um, biggest problem that he's going to have to deal with. And um, he's going to have to respond to the taxpayers and he's going to have to tell them how they um, what he has been doing and how he's been misusing these millions and millions of dollars of taxpayer funds. So, um, you know, this is a guy who's been elected 14 times in the, in the county. Um, and um, we continue to elect them. And I think that until we're able to demonstrate how he is misusing taxpayer dollars, um, he's going to continue winning these elections. Yes? How does the ACLU determine which cases it's going to take? Are you proactive or do you wait for someone to uh, ask? To I, th I think it depends on the issue. And um, sometimes we are proactive where we may read about something in the paper and then we may send, uh, we may make a follow-up call, especially if we think it's a, if it's a good case. That happens quite, quite a bit. Other times they'll come through our intake system. Um, through through our emails, um, so I think I think it just depends. We have we have priorities, strategic priorities, and the board sets those priorities, and there are about seven of them. Um, and um, we're working, and then we, we try to, in terms of those priority areas, we try to look for uh, proactive proactive cases, proactive public education campaigns, and the priority areas are in in a variety of issues: education, students' rights. Uh, First Amendment, um, conditions of confinement, immigration, racial profiling, a lot of these issues. So, you know, again, it depends. Don't tread on me. We got a, we got a call from a reporter from Fox. There was a homeowner association who told a um, homeowner who, that he couldn't put up his don't tread on me flag. And so that was a real, again, real, we called, we wrote a letter to the homeowner association and said, hey, there's a state law that allows homeowners in HOAs to display their military flags, and so we think you're violating it. And so, ultimately, they they caved. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yes, ma'am. Do you have, are you working on any issues regarding lasers? So yes, that's actually a really good uh, question. We have um, done a records request. So we're getting ready to publish a taser report um, based on some investigations that we've been doing on taser use of force policies. In, um, in the state of Arizona. We've collected taser use of force policies for all of the large departments. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that this was something that came up here a couple of years ago, or is yes. this? Um, and it's a very, very real problem, and we are getting ready to publish uh, a report in, in that looks at, because one of the reasons, one of the rationales the police departments will often give you is that tasers will should be used as an alternative to lethal force, right? If you're, it, it should save lives. Is that rather than shooting somebody, we're gonna tase them. But what we're seeing is that there's no correlation between um, taser use and um, gun use. There's also, some, in some instances, um, many instances, tasers are being used as compliance tools, where rather than they're just you know, tasing people who are already on the ground, 
many times there's no limitations on when police officers can use the taser on children or pregnant women. And so um, these are all recommendations that we are going to be including in the report. Yes? Do you, do you work, um, do, do you collaborate with groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center? They, 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 Southern Poverty Law Center works on a lot of uh, well, you know, I think some of the same issues. On a lot of the on some of the immigration uh, issues, well, I think bullying have, and, the, and the student rights and that. Kind yeah, of thing. on on in Arizona, it's been more on the um, some of the immigration rights. stuff, the civil rights stuff, not on the bullying issues. But I know they've been doing a lot of great work, and I know some of our national um, projects have worked very closely with Southern Poverty Law Center. What about gun the gun rights stuff? The people are you folks working in that area at all? The, we, the folks who are so adamant that they have a right to carry everything and everything at any time. I mean, we don't, in Arizona, it's not one of our strategic priorities because there's so many other groups. When we determine what our priorities are and should be, we look at, first of all, what the needs are in the state. We look at how many people are being impacted by public policies, negatively impacted by these public policies. So we look at where we can affect the most people, um, where the needs are, and where, if other organizations are, are, are addressing these issues. We in the Arizona affiliate have a policy that recognizes that the state constitution recognizes the individual right to bear arms. That's the extent of our policy here in Arizona. It differs slightly from the national policy. And so it's a question of resource. And what does that mean, the individual right to bear arms? And yeah, that's, federal, we never looked at, at the, at the local level, we never looked at um, whether or not gun control is what is reasonable gun control measures, what are reasonable gun control measures. The National Office believes that the Second Amendment is a, is a collective right, and so, um, you know, which differs slightly, but the Arizona Constitution has a very spe specific pr provisions and that recognizes the individual right to bear arms. But it's not an issue that the ACLU really does a lot of work on. We've never, in, in, in the 10 years that I've been with the ACLU, we have not looked at that issue or even taken on a case dealing with gun rights, but mainly because you have so many other groups that are. I mean, in Arizona, we have many, many gun lobbying groups, knife lobbying groups, um, all kinds of. Could you give me a couple of names? I, I, I'm not familiar with any of these groups that you're talking about. Well, there's the, there's the NRA, there's the Arizona Citizens no, Defense. Good guys. Oh, the good guys. Oh, I, oh, the good guys are great. They're, I guess, the good guys. Um, who, Advocate for gun control. The only group that I know is, is Brady. That's it. And so, um, so a lot of the issues that have come up recently with regard to um, gun control and questions about the need for gun control, Brady has been taking the lead on that. Are there a couple of more questions for for uh, uh, Alessandra, and then we'll wrap wrap it up. Are there any more questions? I'm sure she'll be glad to. Yes. Around Please, I would encourage you. As I said, you know, if you consider becoming a member of the ACLU. And um, we've got some additional materials here for you to um, take home. And uh, again, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you.